everyone and welcome. You can see the attendee uh, numbers going up, which is great to see. So as everyone joins, it'd be really good if you could just put in the chat panel um, what your name is and where you're joining from. So all of us panelists can, can see the range of places where people are joining from. So are you from London, Leeds, anywhere else? Hopefully we'll start to see that pop up in a sec. For anyone that didn't hear, um, I was just asking anyone that's joined the chat today, um, join this webinar, we're really excited to have you. If you could just drop your name and location in the chat so we can see where everyone's joining from before we get started. We'll just wait for a few more people to join. Oh, I see a couple in the Q&A. Nina from Leeds. Oh, OK. Chat is disabled. So if you want to put it in the Q&A instead, thanks, everyone. Ellie from Manchester. We've got Ellery's from London. Um, sorry about the chat being disabled, but I can see things coming from oh, someone from Chesterfield. Beth from Chesterfield. Welcome. Alex from Kent. Denise from London. Emma from London. David from Gloucester. Ava from Edinburgh, Lauren from Glasgow, Colchester. So we've got a whole range, York, Hertfordshire. Lovely. Welcome, everyone. Um, and thank you so much for joining. Um, my name is Yasmin Hemmings. I'm head of programmes at Creative Access. Um, and we just want to thank you all for joining our webinar today um, with Channel 4 on how to land an apprenticeship at Channel 4. Um, so for anyone with un who's unfamiliar with what Creative Access do, we're a social enterprise that's all about making the creative industries more representative of what the UK looks like today. So that means we work with talented individuals and employers to offer career inspiration, job opportunities and training at all points in people's careers, so from entry level through to senior. Um, so today's webinar is specifically targeted at school or college leavers and people who haven't studied at further education level. And we're really proud to be partnering with Channel 4. And um, we hope that you're going to leave this webinar um, feeling confident about how to apply for the apprenticeships um, that are advertising at the moment. And hopefully you'll understand more about what you can expect if you do land a role with Channel 4. Um, so there'll be time for questions at the end. We'll do a bit, we'll introduce the panel have some questions and then you can submit your questions via the Q&A function. So if you've got a burning question to ask any of our brilliant panel, then please do put it in the Q&A. You can also upvote questions if you can see that someone's asked a question that you'd really love to be answered. And we'll be doing those um, kind of towards the last 20 minutes of today's webinar. So I will move on to introducing the panel. Um, we've got a really amazing panel of experts from Channel 4, Yasmin, Taf, Ashanti and Sarah. And I will hand over to each of them to introduce yourselves. So let's start with Ashanti, if you don't mind. It'd be great if you could tell us your name, what your role is, and how long you've been at Channel 4 and how you joined. Yeah, sure. So hi, everyone. So my name is Ashanti, and I've been here for a year and a half now. I'm a talent advisor, so I work within the recruitment team, and I joined Channel 4 as a talent team apprentice in September 2021. So I feel like I've been here a very long time, but I actually haven't. And yeah, so shall I hand over to Taf? Good segue. <laughs> Hi, I'm Taf, uh, Taf Machenja. I'm a marketing executive and the co-chair of The Shed. Um, I've been at Channel 4 for about four, four years, four years and a bit, uh, so a long time. Um, what, else, what else did we have to say as well? <laughs> uh, you said your role, how long? Role, role how long, <laughs> what I do. <laughs> what you I do. Think I've covered it all. How did you join? You joined as an apprentice. Uh, yeah, so I joined as an apprentice, um, initially starting off in social media. Um, so I've transitioned my way into the marketing team now. So yeah, covered covered it all. Um, I'll pass on to Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a social media apprentice and I've been here for six months. Um, so I joined last September and I joined and I'm an apprentice. I'll pass to Yasmin. 
Hi, um, hi everyone, my name's Yasmin. I work in the early careers team in London. I've been at Channel 4 for, gosh, uh, quite a long time, about almost six years now, which is insane, which is quite scary as well. Um, so I, my job is sort of a bit different to everyone else. I haven't started as an apprentice. I'm not an apprentice. I look after the apprenticeship programme. So I work within the team that does all the recruitment. Um, we work with loads of different departments across Channel 4 to get apprentices into the business. So that's something that I focus on in my job. Brilliant. Thank you all. And I'm sure, Yasmin, you'll be able to provide some insights and top tips and the rest of the panel on how people can um, put their best foot forward for landing an apprenticeship at Channel 4. Um, so we're going to kick off with some questions to all of the panel um, for the next kind of 30 minutes or so. And then, as I said, please do put your questions into the Q&A and upvote them. and We'll, we'll cover some of those um, at the end. But to begin, I'd like to hear a bit more about all of your career journey and to Channel 4 and any particular career highlights to date. Um, so starting with you, Taff, you began as an apprentice, as you said, at Channel 4. Um, it would be great to hear a bit more what that was like and what's been instrumental to your progression as you've moved through the, the organisation. Yeah, um, I mean the the journey has been the journey. Uh, it's it's been it's definitely had highs and lows and and ups and downs and you know lots of changes and, and having to adapt. But it's been an incredible place. One to work. Channel Four is just fantastic. I'll get that out there. Um, if you're going to get your apprenticeship, get at Channel Four. Um, but no, I mean you know like like with anything in life, you are going to experience you know. A lot of hurdles and you've just got to navigate those especially in the workplace um but starting out as an apprentice i couldn't i couldn't have asked for a, you know a really i cannot i couldn't have asked for a better team first and foremost and a, and a support network that i had um at channel four with the other apprentices and obviously like yasmin and, and some of the other sort of talent managers um for for that program so i mean it, you know joining it was such a, a massive massive thing for me um i kind of started out um thinking Christ like am I going to really struggle will I be able to adapt to this will I have you know like will, will, will I be able to pick up what they're asking me to do and and like I said because of the support network and and the trust that people put into you and how people sort of wrap you under their arms and put you you know they put trust in it and they believe in, in what you're capable of doing it gives you that self-belief to think right I can actually do this and once you start actually you know doing the work um you build a lot of confidence and you, you start to think you know I can actually see myself doing this full time so a normal apprenticeship is about 14 months 15 months now um and yeah I, I mean that time literally just flew by it really really did um fly by and uh yeah it just naturally did social media then the apprentice role then became a social media assistant and then this is where the hurdles happen. And there was a big shake up in at Channel 4 with the nations of regions. Um, so teams were being disbanded and people were leaving the company. Um, and I found myself at a crossroads of whether, you know, I wanted to continue my career at Channel 4, find something new. Um, I was fortunate enough that I believed in myself and I backed myself and I applied for an, another role at Channel 4 in the marketing team. Um, and yeah, I... Got it. So I guess in terms of what's been in instrumental to my progression, um, you know, I think it's one self-belief, also people around you supporting you, um, family massively, but also, you know, life, the hurdles that it threw and the, the changes that it brought to me and the decisions I had to make off the back of those changes. Um, so all of that massively played in, in part of how I got to where I am today. Brilliant. Thank you for that. And I guess to you, Ashanti, a similar question. So you also started out as an apprentice at Channel 4. It'd be great to hear a bit more about how did you find the kind of application process? What do you think, what made you want to apply for the role? And then also a bit about your journey to the role you're in now. No, definitely. So um, as Taf said, in life, there's a lot of hurdles. And initially, I did actually go to university. So in 2022, I went to be a journalist at one point and then I actually got there and it was a factor of the lockdown and just, you know, when you start something, you're like, it's not for me anymore. So um, I took a gap year. So I actually did drop out of uni. I am a uni dropout, but it's okay, guys. Um, so I took the year out just to like kind of figure out what I wanted to do. So I applied to a lot of apprenticeships, especially within the media area. It's always been my love. I did it for A-levels and um, I came across Channel 4 through creative access so there you go guys 
Creative Access alumni. <laughs> um, so I applied through Creative Access and I went through the whole process. So it wasn't too bad initially. Um, what I did was a standard additional questions. So like how, like explain why you want the job based off the job description. Um, I went through the recruitment one entirely. I wasn't entirely sure, but because I'm a people's person, I felt like it matched my, I guess, personality and skill set. So I wanted to do this one. And yeah, it wasn't too bad, it was very quick. So I remember applying in May, 2021, and then it came to about June and that was when it was the first interview, got to the second interview and had to do a task. And if you speak to anyone in my team, they still talk about the TikTok I made for my task. So yeah, that was quite awkward, but you know, it was good. And um, from that, I actually got notified that I didn't get the apprenticeship. So it's like Taf said, it comes down to hurdles. I was very upset because I really wanted to, you know, work for Channel 4. And then the day they told me I didn't get it, they called me back the next day saying, I actually want two of you. So when I started, it was actually only me. So I was like, where's the other person? And then she joined in January anyway, so it was quite nice. Um, so I think it is definitely about backing yourself. Um, even being in the role, I've never worked in an office environment before, so I find it quite difficult just adapting to that whole environment. But like my team is lovely and they really made me feel at home, especially my line manager. Like I have to give it to my line manager. She really pushed me. And um, without her, I don't think I would have got promoted as early as I did because I actually got promoted before my apprenticeship officially ended. So I was juggling both my apprenticeship and a full time job and my EPA. But it was very manageable. So, yeah, guys, you can do it. <laughs> Brilliant. So nice to hear that story. Um, and you're now in the position of hiring apprentices, I believe, in your role. So it'd be great to hear a bit more about what the organisation is seeking in terms of potential apprenticeship candidates. What no, def yeah, no, definitely. So my role is more around hiring for like permanent fixed term contracts. However, I do work very closely with Yasmin. Um, we have an inside joke where I'm the most long standing apprentice <laughs> within my team. <laughs> So I do see the guys like doing the whole application process and I'll be honest it's very much about your passion and just your general interest in what you're applying for like you don't need any specific qualifications um, there isn't an age limit so the, uh, your best bet is to like showcase yourself within those additional questions. I think what will make you stand out is you even completing them for one <laughs> because a lot of people actually don't complete them so complete the additional questions and really just put forward why you want to do the role you're applying for and like no answer is a stupid answer like literally just say why you want to do it why you feel you'd be good for it and if you can use examples of any experience you kind of do have so even working in retail is still experience you still can talk about customer experience talk about admin anything's transferable but yeah we're just looking for your passion and I know Yasmin can back me on that one <laughs> Yeah, we at Creative Access, we always talk about transferable skills. So definitely back that point there and thinking about if you've got a retail job or work in a bar or whatever it is, thinking about, you know, what are your communication skills in those roles and trying to apply it um, to your application. Um, Yasmin, I don't know if you have anything to build on on what Ashanti was saying there. Yeah, or well, yeah, I think Ashanti covered it, but it is just to reiterate, it is not, like it's an apprenticeship program and as you mentioned at the beginning it is aimed at people that have not been to university I know are kind of looking for alternative routes into uh, getting a career in their chosen industry so you know we're not looking for loads and loads of experience we're not looking for like a polished person you know we're looking for people that can grow and can, can really develop from this opportunity so that's something you shouldn't shy away from don't think see it and think oh maybe this isn't right for me or maybe I'm not suited to this because I don't have these skills. We're not expecting you to have them. We want you to gain them while you're at Channel 4. So, yeah, I would just massively say it's all about, yeah, like Ashanti said, the passion, the want, the drive, like research into the department you're looking into, things like that. It's it's just having, being able to demonstrate those areas, but not expecting you to have loads of experience behind you at all. Brilliant, thank you. And I know there are a lot of roles on offer, so it'd be great to kind of hear a bit more about what your day-to-day -day responsibilities are. I know we've got Taff working in marketing, Ashanti in talent, and then Sara, you're in social media, which sounds fascinating. So um, you're also studying for a content creator qualification, I believe. What does that look like day-to-day? -day? Thanks, Yasmin. Yeah, so a week in the life of a social media apprentice can consist of many things. Um, so we get one day a week to focus on our 
content creator qualification and I'll just use this day to work on my assignment go through the workshop that we had just making sure I understand the work that we got given um, complete any work that I've got and just fill in my DDT log which is just a record of things that I've done in that month so it can be like any training I've been given um, any courses I've attended any webinars any um, yes, yeah, just any workshops kind of and just fill that in and add the hours that we did that for. Um, and then the rest of the week is just my job role, which is a social media apprentice. And so my team, we schedule any content that's been sent to us on platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter. And we'll just schedule any content that comes through. We'll review our content, just check what's performing well, what's underperforming and just trying to find a solution around that. We sometimes have briefs where we'll come up with ideas for a new series or new show, it just depends what's going on. Um, and trying to think of reactive content that we can post on that day as well. And um, we'll also try to keep up to date with current trends as well so that we can help with engagement as well with our audience. But yeah, every day is all, always different. And I think that's what makes it really great here at Channel 4 because I always said I didn't want a job that was repetitive. I always wanted like where every day was different. And that's why I get here at Channel 4 because I don't know what's going to happen the next day. Like the next day I might have a new meeting for something else or I might have a new brief for something. So it just makes it more exciting. Brilliant. And I guess digging into that a little bit more, how did you, like what made you want to apply for the social media role in particular? And um, so for me, I think I was always like interested in social media and I also have my own dessert business. So I was all, also creating my own content as well. So that kind of got me interested into that field and that sector. So from that, I kind of knew that I kind of want to go into marketing slash social media. And that's when I came across Channel 4's apprenticeships. And that's when I applied and here I am. <laughs> Brilliant. And great to hear that you kind of had already had some of that content creation social experience um, before you applied. I'm sure that definitely would support your application. Um, so Yasmin, moving on to you, I know we're advertising 35 different roles, um, apprenticeship roles at Channel 4 at the moment or that you're looking to fill. So it'd be great to hear a bit more about um, some of the roles maybe that you don't hear about so often. Often, So commissioner, for example, um, could you tell us a bit more about what that kind of role involves? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we have a real wide variety of roles on offer and we have lots of roles that are really popular and that people, when they think of Channel 4, they automatically sort of think of. So it's like production roles, creative roles. We also have lots of roles actually um, exist in a normal business or kind of exist at Channel 4 that lots of people don't know about. So one of them is commissioning. So we have about four roles on offer in commissioning, I believe it might be five. Um, and commission is basically the team at Channel 4 that decides what goes on our screens. So if some of you watching don't know, but Channel 4 um, works a bit differently to other TV broadcasters. So we don't create any of our own content in-house. Our content that is on Channel 4 screens is actually created at production companies. So we work with lots of different production companies across the UK. So the commissioners at Channel 4, that's their job to work with those production companies and decide what TV programmes go on our screens. So our commissioning teams are split up into genres as well. So we've got like a digital commissioning team who are looking for an apprentice and they do a lot of our kind of social media um, original content, which is really exciting. We've got a um, daytime and features commissioning team in Glasgow and they look after daytime TV programmes and features. Um, we've got a sports commissioning team in our Leeds office and they're also looking for an apprentice um, and that apprentice actually is going to work really heavily on the Paralympics so they are looking for someone that's disabled to do that role because um, disabled people are obviously underrepresented in the industry so we're looking for someone to do that opportunity which would be great and um, so that's a bit about commissioning and it's a great department to work in I like to kind of put that across because it doesn't get a lot of interest and I think that's generally because people don't really know what it is um, and if you're someone that's looking to get their first kind of steps in the TV industry in an area that works creatively, but it is quite an administrative role, it's a great opportunity for you because you get those brilliant connections as well, because the people that you're working with are people that have worked in this industry for a long time, have worked at produ production companies, have produced TV programmes, um, so it's a great opportunity 
Um, and we've got some other roles that kind of people don't really hear about much that we're looking for apprentices in. Um, for example, um, procurement, which I talk about, and people are like, "Oh gosh, procurement!" But uh, you know, it's not it's it's not traditionally something that people maybe think. Let me start my career in procurement. But actually, if you're interested in finance and you're interested in the way businesses run, they work with suppliers, how we do contracts with all the hundreds of suppliers we work with, it's a great opportunity to start off in. And it's not. And I always say about apprenticeships as well. It's not something that you have to stay in forever if it's not for you you can always move into other areas like TAF has um, so it's a great opportunity to look at um, and we've also got apprenticeships in our pictures team sorry I'm just looking at this because I'm trying to remember all of them but our pictures team as well do you think pictures you think oh that sounds cool but actually I think lots of people don't really know what they do so it's great for people that are into photography that like editing pictures and um, that want to go on shoots and work on photo shoots for our big shows that are coming out so yeah we have a real range of opportunities all from like HR as well we've got an apprenticeship opportunity in our benefits and systems team which is a great opportunity because being someone that develops in systems, learning how to use systems kind of from the back end and, and really on that kind of professional scale is really sought after. So there's loads of different opportunities for lots of people, whether it be creative or actually you might be someone that loves TV, loves the industry, but actually you have an interest in finance or um, HR. So there's really opportunities for everyone. Brilliant. And if someone is kind of looking at the roles and isn't quite sure which one to apply for, do you have any recommendations for them? This open to Yasmin or anyone else who wants to to come in on that. Does anyone else want to cover that? I can um, say the one. Yeah, you go, on. Shanti. Oh, oh, okay. I was going to say from personal experience because I kind of was looking at all the list of apprenticeships. So I was thinking, oh, like which one would I do? So how I kind of narrowed it down was based off like I guess my personality traits because I'm very like people person and I like like collaborating with a lot of people across the in like the business I felt like okay HR makes sense for me but then I also was looking at like um we had events one at a time where you could like coordinate events for our sales team and then they do a lot of things with like shows and people that we work with so I was like if I was like if it's not HR then probably the events one purely because of my organizational skills so I feel like that could be a good way to narrow down your interests a bit and I think Yasmin um, M will allow to apply for as many as you want, right? So I think they can apply for as many as they want. Yeah, I do, I'd say you definitely can apply for as many as you want. But I say, like Ashanti said, look at the look at what you look, look at what the job is, and make sure you apply for the ones that you genuinely would be happy doing, and um, that you have this kind of interest in. But yeah, you can apply for more than one definitely. And I guess just following on from that, because again, I think I applied for two different apprenticeships and. The reason why I did that was because I was going for things that I was passionate in, but also things that I knew I had interest and skills in, because, again, you want to be doing something that you are going to enjoy doing. You don't want to sit there. I, I, and I, I also think people will register quickly in the interview process and on your CV if you are just doing it to try and get the job. So you've definitely got to show that passion, that, that interest, that you, you really want to do this and you really want to be there doing that. Brilliant. Thank you all. Um, so I'm interested to hear kind of your piece of advice for anyone listening that um, wants to stand out in their application. So I might, I'll probably put it to Taf, Ashanti and Sara in that order. So yeah, Taf, what would you advise for anyone who wants to stand out in their application? What could they do? Um, you know, Shanti, you, you, got, you kind of said it already. I think in order to stand out, you just have to be yourself. And, you know, it's, it's a sort of a buzzword that is thrown around quite a lot, but you have to be authentic self and being yourself, you will stand up more than ever anyone else. Um, I think, you know, in terms of myself, I, I used my strengths and, and my skills and which were I'm great with people. I know, you know, I've got massive interest. And I remember at the time when I was applying, um, you know, I was running like my own online blogging site. I was doing like radio stuff. I was acting as well on the side so I was doing loads of things that I showed I've got these skills and I've got all of these talents and passions and this makes me who I am and I think that's essentially what you have to do is say kind of in a weird way sell yourself but in a positive way and saying like these are my strengths and I know what I'm capable of 
and I'm, this is what I can bring to you guys and I want to grow and I want to learn more and I want to develop. So it's about shouting without shouting and saying, this is who I am and this is what I can bring to you. Um, and hopefully that marriage can, can happen and you can both develop together. Um, I think, yeah, that, that's really it for me. I don't know if anyone else has any more to add, add on to that. Ashanti and Sarah, do you have any insights also from a kind of the interview perspective? I know Ashanti, you mentioned about you having a task and doing a TikTok task. Maybe you could go into a little bit more detail about that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so for my interviews, I had two interviews and for the second one I had to do a task. And I remember this like it was after because my friend and I were up until like midnight because I was panicking and <laughs> was helping me do my PowerPoint. But um, so essentially for my task, I had to pretend that I was putting on a careers fair so it was like for apprenticeships and just a general jobs so I had to make a leaflet and I remember I did it on Canva so I was like okay I'm not really I'm creative but I can't do graphics so I was like okay let me use Canva and see if I can just do something in the end it worked out so <laughs> I did that and they didn't specifically say to do a TikTok but I thought so they basically said come up with a way that you can promote it into um, a fun way to a young audience. So I was like, oh, TikTok, like, you know, everyone's on TikTok, especially our age demographic. So I just made a TikTok and until this day, like I remember my mom just laughing at me because I was just like pointing in front of the Channel 4 sign and just like, yeah, this is reasons why you should apply and all that stuff. But I think it's like, it's really fun. Like even all the other tasks that I know my friends when they joined with me as well did that it was quite interesting. Like one was like, um, plan an event for example like how would you make this event what would you do so I feel like definitely showcase yourself in the task be as creative as possible even if you're going through something like finance for example you still can show your creative flair somehow um, definitely don't dismiss your experiences because I came from a retail environment as well as like Taff I was running my own blog as well because I did want to be a journalist um, still do a little bit of writing on the side so definitely you can use the things you do and just bring it forward like there isn't anything bad by trying so just try <laughs> thank you and finally Sarah do you have any advice for anyone in their applications or interviews yeah so just following on from what Taff said to just honestly just be yourself and I know it's something that just gets mentioned all the time but it really is helpful um just making sure you have your an up-to-date CV um, and everyone has experiences in something um, like if you're in college, for example, you must have you'll have experience in just like maybe doing your assignments or you might have joined a club and you might have been given the chance to be a leader, for example. And that's all experience. So you can put it down for me, for my task. I had to come up with a presentation for how I would create content for the new series of the Great British Bake Off. So I also use Canva like Ashanti and I just kind of like. I try to make it as um, creative and quite eye-catching as possible, but also trying not to put as much information so that it's not too much. I also thought of things like using the colours that like associate with the Great British Bake Off and just little things like that kind of made it stand out. Um, and obviously I did have a I do have a business, so that's where my experience came from. But yeah, I'm sure everyone has experience somewhere. And also, I think Channel 4 has launched their work experience as well just recently. So definitely, if you're applying, sign up to that. Um, it's a really good um, experience to have. And you can add that onto your CV. And it'll just give you more of an insight to all the departments across Channel 4 as well. Amazing. Thank you. Um, so it would be great to hear a bit more about what all of you were doing before your apprenticeships or roles at Channel 4 in terms of like what experience did you have so people have a kind of picture of what experience people can come in with. Um, I guess Taffy you mentioned you were doing a few bits and bobs, are you happy to go in a, into a bit more detail? Yeah absolutely, um, when I say a few bits and bobs I actually mean a few bits and bobs. Um, so I mean so I'm, I'm also a college I'm not from America. I'm a, I'm a uni dropout as well. Um, and I dropped out in my my third year and I studied in drama, theatre, arts. Um, and then I started professionally acting. Um, and while I was doing that, I was running a music blog website, um, obviously doing like social media and stuff like that on, on the side on in terms of promoting the, the radio station, not the radio station, that was while I was at uni, um, promoting the blogs and obviously the shows and stuff like that. 
um, just trying to get myself to do what I can, where I can, and, and however I can. And sometimes that also meant doing pub work and stuff like that to get some extra money. Um, so I was doing a lot and then kind of at the end of the run of, of my play, I sort of thought, okay, right, I need something that's going to allow me to have some money, but also allow me to build on my experiences and, and my passions and, and my interests. And obviously, like, like everyone else, you, you kind of know exactly what you want to sort of go into, which is the media and all of that. Um, and I, I was applying for so many different things. And then someone mentioned apprenticeships and I sort of looked into them. And I thought this, this, this is actually it because I don't think anyone... If someone were, say, were to say to you while you're at school, you could study, work in a real time job and be paid for it, you'd be like, come on, sign, like, sign me up. Um, so, yeah, I just I applied for as many as I could and, and, you know, got through the Channel 4 social media apprenticeship and then um, got it in the end. Um, so in terms of, you know, what I was doing before, I was doing a number of things from acting, social media, um, writing blogs, bit of journalism, um, all of, and all of that stuff I brought I brought it with me into you know what I was doing in the sense of um, my application and making sure that you know I brought my true authentic self into that I also made sure I stood out and showed those strengths and those weaknesses as well um, and I guess yeah that, that that's really it like I was doing <laughs> I was doing so much um, but I was quite glad to sort of find something that allowed me to one continue doing the stuff outside but also continue to learn and grow and develop at channel four um, hopefully that answered your question yeah definitely um and i mean sarah i hope you don't mind me asking you you um you mentioned when we met before about your dad kind of pushing you to apply i wonder how is your close network in terms of family and friends how are they how have they supported your your career path yeah they were definitely really supportive um yeah my dad did kind of like push me to apply because I did see the channel four apprenticeships when I first saw it and I thought no chance like that's never going to happen ever like channel four who am I <laughs> and then I mentioned it to my dad and then a couple of weeks later he was like have you applied and I was like no not yet and he goes what are you doing just apply and I thought do you know what I've got nothing to lose so I just applied anyway and well look where I am got me here but yeah if you're if anyone out there is thinking you've got no chance like you don't think you're gonna get it just apply anyway because you never know what can happen and my family have been really supportive even though I live quite far away from the Leeds office and um, that's one thing that did really put me off but it was too good of an opportunity to say no to and they were quite happy with it and yeah that's everything <laughs> Can I just add to that quickly? Yeah. Um, because I remember when Sarah first mentioned that, I think I instinctively said, like, that your fear of getting rejection or whatever, like, throws you off and it stopped, like, you're the first thing that stops yourself from, from doing anything. Um, and I think it's so important to remember, like, you have to believe in yourself. And the worst thing that can happen is you, you say no, but you have to just pick yourself back up. And you have to keep applying and you have to keep pushing. And part of that is through acting, but also part of that is through, you know, your family, the support network that you have. And, you know, the people around you need to help support and, and motivate and push you. But ultimately, you also have to believe in yourself um, because you're the only person who can get yourself to point A and point B. And you're the first person who will stop yourself from getting to that, you know, sending that letter or sending that application. And um, so it's very important to believe in yourself nice motivational message there um I've got I guess more of a practical question for Yasmin which is about how does the apprenticeship qualification part of of the roles work like what's the division between kind of work and study yeah so every apprenticeship opportunity will have a qualification that's aligned with it so they might be slightly different depending on the role but the usual way that they run is that um all apprentices will have one study day a week to focus on their studies, whether that to be complete their coursework, to do their um, like logging kind of, you have to log some hours of work and things like that. So every apprentice will get that one day. So that's quite good. Like you should, it should be manageable to have that one day. So you shouldn't have too much kind of stress of managing your workload and your studies obviously they are sometimes going to cross over and that's where we're here to support you if you if you ever want to talk about kind of ways in which you can manage your workload and um, 
So yeah, everyone will have one day of study. And then depending on the qualification, the kind of learning bit is different. Some people have actual kind of learning days where they go away somewhere and learn at a college or kind of a place. Some people do a lot of virtual learning. To be honest, because of COVID, a lot of learning is now virtual. Um, so the qualification is run by a separate learning provider. So a lot of the learning providers have just found it a bit more accessible doing everything virtually. So a lot of them are, I know like Sarah, yours is quite virtual, isn't it? And you're sometimes doing like two day workshops virtually, which um, is something that happens. Um, and then some people do kind of classroom learning, but it's very much dependent on the qualification. But all of that stuff is kind of spoken to you about at the beginning. There is on each job description, a bit of a info about the qualification. If you want to click on it, you can read about, a bit about it. Um, and we have inductions with the learning providers when people join us as well. So we try and get you kind of as much up to date as possible about what's kind of going on with the qualification. Brilliant. Thank you. That's really helpful, I'm sure. And um, yeah, anyone listening to this call who's thinking of applying, definitely recommend looking through the job descriptions and familiarising yourself so you kind of know, have an idea of what to expect. Um, I'm sure something that a lot of people on the call will be interested in is if I am successful in getting an apprenticeship, am I likely to be kept on or be able to apply for another role at Channel 4? And I know Taff and Ashanti, you have both stayed on after your apprenticeship. So I'd love to ask you both a question about, you know, what do you feel helped you to get those to secure those roles after your apprenticeships? Um, Ashanti, do you want to go first? No, definitely. So I feel like, so like I said, I got promoted early. So I got offered my current role now. Um, when did they tell me? I think it was like last year's summer, like around August. And um, I was kind of naturally thinking anyway, because my apprenticeship was ending, was supposed to end in December. So I was actually really thinking, okay, if I can't stay within my team, where would I go in general? I was just like, you start to look for roles anyway. And um Obviously, I was quite lucky that where the, my team came to me and said, do I want the job? And I said, oh, yeah, that's great. I don't have to actually look for anything. But um, I definitely feel like I would say just my drive in general, probably my hard working um, attitude and just like the way I would like show up for certain things. So I put myself forward for a lot of different things that probably were out of my comfort zone. But it allows me to grow more. And it goes back to the whole self-doubt thing. If you keep thinking no you can't do it then you will never do it so I, I think I really just pushed myself and it paid off in the end um but in more of a general sense and like I know a lot of like my friends which have moved from their apprenticeship team to a whole completely new different team and um I think what helped them is that a lot of them put in meetings with like the hiring managers and just got a better understanding of that department or they offered to like shadow someone who currently did the job that they potentially wanted to do so I feel like, again, it goes down to networking. Just because you sit within a team doesn't mean that you can't branch out and get to learn other areas. And um, I feel like I'm quite lucky because my role, I speak, I speak to so many different people across so many different departments. But if you don't necessarily have that opportunity, it's it's not bad like just to drop someone a message. Like everyone at Channel 4 is friendly. Um, I didn't believe it at first because everyone kept saying, I was like, no, how can everyone be friendly? But generally, if you message someone, like they really do want to help you. And um so yeah, just put yourself out there and just try to get as many opportunities as you can, to be honest. Great advice. I think networking is always good. Um, and Taff, yeah, over to you. You've been at Channel 4 for a little while now. So what do you think yeah. is the progression there? Part, part of the woodwork now. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, we've sort of highlighted that you'll have ups and downs throughout your career. And, and I guess it's just about one being not, not afraid of change and embracing it. And whatever comes your way, it's thinking, okay, what's what's the silver lining? What's the positive that I can get out of the situation? Um, and, you know, in terms of being kept on and, and things like that, I, I remember from my apprenticeship group, there were there were about four of us, and I think two of us got kept on. But the positive thing about that is that you've obviously got a network of people that you can lean on and, and, net, and networks that you've made through the work that you've done through your apprenticeship who can help you move on to, you know, roles within Channel 4 or external roles as well in other companies. You've got support from the careers the careers team as well. So it's like you won't be left alone to yourself to, to figure out what's next, what, what's, you know, what am I going to do? And I guess, you know, just in, in, in terms of building on from what Ashanti sort of said is that, you know, you, again, it's like self-belief and and also putting yourself out there and really pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And I remember that's what I was doing during my apprenticeship. 
um, I kept just putting my, my hat into loads of things and kept saying yes and kept showing up and kept asking people questions and kept showing my determination and my drive and you know hot you know talent can only take you so far you have to work hard and you have to show that you want to to be there and you want to grow and you want to develop um and I remember towards the end of my apprenticeship particularly the social team at that time this was before it was for studios and based in Leeds um you know they kept apprentices on as um freelancers and I know some some people in the, in the chat I've been asking about um, non-UK internationals and stuff like that. So I'm migrant and part of my visa was that I needed basically a full-time job. I could not do a free, a freelance work or anything like that. And then I, and I specified that to them and I said, look, I'm, I want to stay here. I want to continue my career and I want to grow here, but I can only do that as a full-time full -time staff member. And, you know, it's one, Channel is a great place. I don't know if anywhere else would be like, yeah, you know, we, we want to keep you on, but they recognize the talent that you have. And if you've worked hard and you've showcased like who you are and what you can bring to, to the company and the organization, you know, people will want to keep you there and people want to make sure that you continue to grow and, and those types of things. So, you know, it's about self-belief, pushing yourself to your limits, continuing continue to grow and, and wanting to learn. Um, and then just putting yourself out there because the worst that can happen is you get a no or someone closes the door in your face, but that's not the end of the world you know um so yeah that that's what i'd say um from my point of view yeah some great great advice there i think you know showing up doing the work but also like kind of telling people if you want to stay letting people know um yeah what opportunities are available um so thank you all so i'm going to start going to some of the questions from the audience now because i think we've got a few and i will try and filter them slightly so we have a question from Martha which I will put to Yasmin so Martha's asking do you need to live in a certain area to apply no so I, I really wanted to mention this actually but we so our roles are predominantly based in London Leeds we have a couple I think we have a couple in Manchester and a couple in Glasgow but we actually as part of our early careers like service or like our offer and um, we offer like a relocation support package to people that uh, would need to move for an opportunity so I think it's if you live like further than 25 miles from that particular office location and um, so if you were not based in London for example and you were looking at a London opportunity you're thinking oh, I really want to do that but obviously it's a challenge to move we can support you with relocating so we support with like a first month's rent and deposit and searching for a property um, so definitely don't let that hold you back from applying if that's something you're looking at. So yeah, you can live wherever if you want to apply for an opportunity. We can help you move if you would like to do so. Brilliant, thank you. And I guess another one which you touched on a bit earlier, Yasmin, um, someone has asked, will it harm my chances if I apply to multiple openings? No, so I would say absolutely apply for more than one role if you'd like to. I just... I always try to say though, don't like literally apply for every single role because then it's a bit like what, obviously we get people really passionate and want to kind of enter an industry, but then it's like, what do you actually want to do? What are you going to enjoy? What are you going to get the most out of? So yeah, definitely apply for more than one, absolutely. But look at those job descriptions, look at the skills and and the what you'll actually be doing in the job and make sure you're applying for ones that you'll genuinely enjoy. Brilliant. Um, and one for um, Tafsara and Ashanti, I think. How did you all individually prepare for the interview stage? Now, you've covered a little bit of that, but like thinking about your preparation, how did you approach that? Um, Sara, do you want to go? Yeah, so um, for me, um, for the first stage, which is just the questions, I just honestly just answered them and just added in any experience I had and just like I said just I just was myself the second stage was on to an interview and to prepare for that I just kind of searched up any questions that would generally come up in an interview um, and a lot came up on Google when I did search it up so I just kind of wrote like um, quick kind of answers for that um, and the good thing with that interview as well they did give you like a second chance in case you didn't like your first recording so that was quite good as well. If you didn't like your first answer, you could actually like video yourself again. And then the last stage, which was 
quite a big task. Um, I got some help from family and friends, which just kind of gave me advice on how to go about it. But I was also quite familiar with Canvas. I kind of knew what I wanted it to look like. Um, and I knew more about the show as well, because it was quite a big show that everyone kind of watches. So I kind of had an idea, but also Google does really help, I have to say. But um, if you are applying and you're not sure what to add in your in your application or what to put in your CV, we do have videos on YouTube on the Four Skills Career page, um, just CV tapes and interview tapes. So um, those applying can always go there and just have a quick watch. Brilliant, thank you. And we also have lots of CV and cover letter and application tips on our resources page of the Creative Access website. So if you're wanting some advice, then do look there as well. Um, Ashanti, how did you prepare for, you, you've spoken a bit about the task, but was there a stage before that as well? Yeah, so definitely. So obviously the first bit was um, submitting my additional questions. And what I did was really just look at the job description and essential skills and just try and use examples of what I've done in my work environment or even at sixth form as well. Um, so I used that and just kept like proof checking my additional questions. I also researched the department that I was going into. So I went to learn a bit more about the people team, which is HR, um, as well as Channel 4's remit, because before I did my research, I didn't even know Channel 4 had a remit. Like I knew they were known for like making risky content, but not the depth of it until I did my research. And I think that really helped me to stand out in my application questions. Um, in terms of the higher view, you couldn't really prepare because you didn't know what questions you would get asked, but um, <laughs> I definitely did re-record it a couple of times. I remember just sitting in my room and I was like, this is so awkward <laughs> talking to myself, but um, it was totally fine. Like it was really good questions. Um, in terms of the first interview, again, I couldn't prep, but I just kind of thought of like questions they would ask me. So I looked at my CV, just made sure that I got up to date um, and tried to think of all my kind of experiences that I could mention any transferable skills um but yeah I think I feel like if you over prepare you just throw yourself off so it's like prepare enough to not get in your head because I overthink a lot so try not to like psych yourself out just like get some key points down of what you've done and what you can bring to the role that you're applying to but um try not to panic just be yourself I feel like if you force it you don't become like you don't portray your authentic self and they like you for you so if you get picked you know it's for you <laughs> Anything to add to that, Taf? Yeah, I guess just some few bits. Everything's pretty much been covered, but I guess what I would say is um, just on that whole point of like being authentic and being yourself, um, don't try and say things or, or write things down that you think they want to hear. You know, be like generally just be yourself and and that, that will come across and that will be picked up. Um, because more often than not, you will try and write something thinking this is what they want, this is what they expect to men. Again, it's like Yasmin said, you know, we don't want the finished article. We want someone that can develop and grow and who wants to learn and grow. So, yeah, it's just about being yourself um, making sure you prep up on the role, on the, on the company, the people that you might be working with. Um, and yeah, everything else has been pretty much covered. <laughs> Some great tips there. Um, and Yasmin, just thinking about the actual kind of process and the stages in terms of application, what can people yeah. expect if they do apply for a role? Yeah, so we don't have that many stages actually. Um, so it will be the online application. So like Ashanti said, you need to do the questions. I have to like hammer that home because a lot of people don't honestly. And it's like, oh, it's, it's just just do the questions if you, if you want to have a chance do the questions and um, so you supply your cv do the questions um and then if you're successful after that stage then there is the higher view platform which a couple of people have mentioned so that's where we will set you some questions to do so you have about a week to do them and you do them in your own time so it'll be very much just an opportunity to find out a bit more about you and that's what we say like along the whole of the process like it's just really to find out more about you so we want you to obviously feel as relaxed as possible we understand it is an interview you're going to be nervous absolutely but we're not here to like catch anyone out we want to just know you who you are and um, so we ask you some questions and then after that stage if you're successful that's then kind of the final stage of the process so that will be a final 
tasks. So we'll set everyone a task based around the role that they've applied for. And it will also include some kind of questions around the tasks and final questions with the hiring team. So the final interview will be with the actual team that you're being hired by and also someone from the early careers teams. So that could be me, that could be my colleagues, uh, like Lowry, it could be Ashanti from the talent team. So yeah, there'll always be, everyone's very friendly. So we try and make it a really nice process as much as it can be of an interview process. But yeah, that's it. Can I just say the process has changed from when I when I did it. Yeah. Just, that sounds like a dream. Because I remember we had to after after the um which is kind of like the high view where you send in your application, we got brought into the office. So like a group of everyone like I can't remember how many people would have applied. So it whittled down and then whittled down and then all of those people who were like in that final number went into the office. And you were kind of like competing against each other. I called it like X Factor, where you were just <laughs> all sat in the room, kind of like bouncing ideas. And then you do like a little project there and then. And then there would also be a presentation that you had to bring in prior to as well. Um, and then lunch would happen. And then half the people would be sent back because they wouldn't unfortunately get on to the next round. Um, but you know that's that's how it is you know um but yeah this this sounds like an absolute dream guys this is this is perfect there's there's nothing to be worried about <laughs> you heard it here first uh, so if you if you're kind of slightly on the fence about applying hopefully that just pushes you over to to just submit an application and see what happens um we've also had a couple of uh, questions kind of about eligibility um to apply so we have a question from beth if i've already done an apprenticeship can i still apply um they're currently doing a digital marketing apprenticeship but will be finished in may but want to specialize in social media and separately does it matter if, if someone is applying that hasn't left school or college recently okay yeah so if you've already done an apprenticeship i would just say if you're applying for a qualification that's the same level as the apprenticeship you've already done it wouldn't be my recommendation. I'd probably suggest potentially looking at more of a junior role in that area. So like an assistant role or um, yeah, an entry level role. Because the only thing is you might find that you're just doing a lot of the same things on the apprenticeship or it is a bit of a crossover. I can completely understand if you've studied in a different area, but we obviously want people to come in that are kind of getting that entry level opportunity um, but I suppose also just read the job description and see if there's any crossover in what you've already done and learned um, and the second question was sorry can you remind me yeah sorry um it does it matter if someone is applying that hasn't left school or college recently no so I don't, I'm, I'm trying to if that means that you left school or college like years ago that's absolutely fine obviously the apprenticeship starts in September so you need to be kind of out of education 18 at the time the apprenticeship starts but if you left college like five years ago that's absolutely fine um you know we've had lots of apprentices that have actually started like a bit later on in life um that have been doing jobs and kind of working in retail and other things before they've applied for their apprenticeships so that's absolutely fine Great. And we do have a question. I know these roles are really targeted at people who might not have a degree or gone um, been through further education. Um, someone's asked, if you already have a degree, can you still apply and do you need A-levels? So the opportunities are aimed at non-degree holders. And that is, again, because of the level of qualification that's offered. They're all below degree levels. So you'd almost be studying at a lower level than you've already studied at. And the opportunities obviously are for people that are, it's aimed at school leavers and people that don't have a degree for that reason. I would say if you have a degree, we would direct you to our full skills website, which has lots of other opportunities that are available, some other schemes that we run. Also channel for jobs, kind of entry level roles um, would be suited, there's some roles that are suited to degree holders. So keep an eye on the channel for jobs website for jobs kind of throughout the year that come out. Um, and do you need A levels to apply? So there's not a specific requirement. It depends on the qualification. Um, we do suggest you have at least um, a C in maths and English, just because if you don't, you have to do extra studying alongside your qualification. It can sort of be done, but we want we just suggest it. So you don't necessarily need A levels in order to apply. No. 
Brilliant, thank you. I think that's really helpful. Um, so we've probably got time for a couple more questions. And um, there is a nice one here, which is, what's the best thing about being an apprentice at Channel 4? Um, so obviously, Sarah, you're a current apprentice, so I would love to put that to you. And then maybe Ashanti and Taffy can add in. And Yasmin, of course, more generally about what you enjoy about working um, at Channel 4. So Sarah, over to you. The one day off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm only joking. Um, it, I mean, it is helpful, obviously, because you working from home, doing your um assignments and any work that you need to complete it. But also, when I joined, I joined with a bunch of other apprentices, and it's just nice to have like everyone doing the same qualification, um, because we can always ask each other for help, um, because we're all doing the same course, so we all get the same assignments, and it's just nice to have like those guys there as well um yeah I think that's it really but it's um we always we always do kind of things together as well like even outside of work it gives you a nice break as well from your normal day-to-day -day job and but we also get to do other things like at the moment we're working on the apprentice show which I think Taff has done as well and oh and Ashanti and um, so that's just like a kind of side product project that we kind of can work on I'm um, away from work but it's quite fun and quite creative as well lovely um Ashanti how about you what's your favorite thing about um working at channel four um besides the people the like the amount of opportunities you actually can do because I remember I think in the first two months of me joining like for what like you have your team has loads of socials anyway so there's a lot of opportunities to like do bowling and like do darts and things like that but Channel 4 in general often do like screenings so sometimes you can see shows before they've been released like in the cinema room um you can go to like screenings like outside cinemas as well I remember I watched Last Night in Soho which was a film for film um going to parties like the Christmas party is really fun the summer party is quite fun too so I think it's just opportunities to get involved in different things um we have something called the ERG group so like if you want to be part of something like the collective so that's um targeted at like diverse um, employees but as well as other um, ethnicities too um, for pride for women so outside of your job you can really get stuck into different things and obviously TAF is like the Sheds co-chair as well so <laughs> you can just get involved in a lot of different things um, I helped one of my colleagues do a podcast once so yeah it's just nice to just get involved in different things throughout the company so it's quite good. Amazing and do you TAF what yeah. you I mean, again, everything everything has been pretty much covered. Um, the one thing I would say is definitely when while you're an apprentice, there is so much for you to do. Um, people really want to take you under the wing and get you to do X, Y, and Z. I remember going to like in different event parties, meeting celebrities, meeting, networking with loads of different people. Um, but I think the biggest, now that I've been through this for about four years, I think the biggest thing that I've really enjoyed about Channel 4 is ultimately the people. Um, they really do make Channel 4 such an amazing place to work at. Um, so if you do get that opportunity, you'll feel it and you'll become part of the family. God, that's soppy, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely. Everyone's mentioned the people and, uh, well, clearly it's a great place to work. Um, so thank you all. So we're going to kind of move on to the closing statements. Um, I've got one more question for all of you, but hopefully to everyone on that call that's given you a bit of food for thought. Um, and we'd really appreciate your feedback from today's session just before we move to um, final statements from each of our panellists. So um, my colleague Ella has just dropped a, um, a feedback form in the chat. So if you just click that open um, fill it out, it'd be great to hear how you found the event today. Um, but to finish from each of you, I'd love you to tell us kind of what is the one thing that you'd ask people listening today to take back and make happen in their organisation to really help us drive more inclusive recruitment in the creative industries and beyond, if you have any thoughts, quite a big question. But yeah, what could each person do to help drive more inclusive re recruitment? Um, anyone want to go in on that first? I like Yasmin should start first. <laughs> Throwing you in. <laughs> um, that is a big question. <laughs> um, for me, I suppose it's like looking at the recruitment process as a whole and removing those barriers. So, like, I, I don't think any recruitment process is perfect. And I think even I'll like be honest, even ourselves, like in hindsight, things could be done differently. But I think that you know, making sure that your job descriptions are you're not expecting 
lots from people in order to apply for opportunities, making sure that actually we give opportunities to everyone that kind of deserves them, that anyone can apply, that we make sure that someone can look at the job description and not feel like they don't have the skills or skill set in order to get gain the opportunity. Um, sorry, I don't know if that's a correct answer to give that question, but I think it's just, especially with apprenticeships and entry level opportunities, that like we don't want to create more barriers in order for people to apply. So I think just looking at our recruitment processes really carefully and, and seeing if yours actually, if there's things that you can maybe change. So example, like even, like I know Taff, you did a really different process like the assessment days and stuff mm. actually. We found, because obviously because of COVID, we had to move everything online. And we actually found it worked really nicely. And actually people felt more comfortable because the assessment days, we thought, what did we actually get from them that we couldn't get from a process that was maybe online or a bit different? And it made people feel a bit more relaxed. I think lots of people are used to this virtual life and talking to a camera. Um, so even, I suppose, yeah, recruitment practices that you could potentially change or amend to make a bit more inclusive for everyone brilliant I, I know I put the question to everyone but I've just noticed the time so I will just leave us on um so just so everyone knows there's still until um February 27th to apply for all of the 35 different apprenticeship roles on offer from channel four so do head to our opportunities board um on the creative access website to put yourself forward um the links there in the chat so you can just click through have a look through the roles see if there's any um that suit your skills and interests and please do apply um you can also check out our Instagram over the last month we've been posting job application advice for CV and cover letter writing plus how to prep for the interview stage um and we, we've tried to answer as many questions as we could but if you do have anything else you'd like to ask then you can reach us at info at creativeaccess.org.uk um if there's anything further but I just want to extend a massive massive thank you to our brilliant panel Sarah, Yasmin, Ashanti and Taff um I hope they well I feel you provided um the audience with really interesting insights and some useful tips for anyone that is going to apply so I hope we see some applications from um from those on the call today and thank you so much for joining thank you for having us yeah thank, thank you so much. much thanks everyone thanks guys thank you bye, bye.